Ah, good morning, good morning, good morning. Or as we say in Klossa, Malwen Yabotobobam. Klossa is one of South Africa's 11 national languages. It's a language spoken by Nelson Mandela, and it's most commonly spoken in the Eastern Cape, where I'm from, and where this picture that you see behind me is from. When I was at medical school, one of the professors said to me, nothing good comes out of the Eastern Cape. I'm not sure if he was referring to me or if he didn't know Nelson Mandela, but anyway, um, it sort of put the impetus into my mind that I should actually go and do something about that. So this road is near Kombu, which is actually where Nelson Mandela's birthplace and home is. And I drove down this road to my first job as a real doctor at Madwaleni Hospital. It's a very rural hospital. It took an hour and a half round trip to fill up with petrol. Uh, so it's like kind of driving to Amanus to fill up with petrol. So we really were kind of out there. This was my road to, to work. Um, so I love driving to work. <laughs> and uh, there wasn't that much traffic apart from cows and sheep. And um, it was interesting because our first, our sort of theme, uh, our motto at the time was a quote by Helen Keller, where life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. In 2004, I saw a patient with an eye condition. Uh, one of his eyes was badly affected. I didn't really know what it was. It looked very serious. So I wrote this letter, and I said, please, please, please go to Mtata Hospital. It's the nearest specialist hospital. It's only two or three hours away. I think you can get there in time. And that's the last I saw of him. Seven years later, I went back to volunteer as a specialist, the same patient came back with his letter, saying, now I can see a specialist. He had never been to Amtata actually in his life. Um, the tragic part of the story was that he'd gone blind in that eye, and I realized then we actually had the medication he needed the first time I had seen him. So this was a very personal moment when I realized that a small piece of specialist information really could have changed his life. Once I started specializing, I realized the problem wasn't just in the rural areas, the problem was with the scarcity of specialists. You may not know, but South Africa's essentially got two health systems. If you're sitting in these expensive seats, it probably means you've got medical aid, and you're probably part of the private healthcare system. The private healthcare system looks after about 8 million people, and there's one doctor per 1,500 people. So it's essentially one doctor for all of you in this theater. There's also one specialist per 1,500 people. So essentially, you've all got access to a specialist. In the public sector, however, there's one doctor for every 4,500 people, which is three of these theaters. And there's one specialist for every 18,000 patients, which is 12 artscapes. So you can see that specialist skills are exceptionally scarce, and we really have to maximize uh, those, the availability of those. You can see I'm seeing one patient. I have to teach two students at the same time. There's another patient waiting with a crying baby in her arms, and the phone, the landline phone in the yellow circle, is ringing off the hook with people like I was in the rural areas trying to contact me, and invariably the thing that gets missed is the, is the phone call. So we had to solve that problem. I'm probably one of the few people that says, guys, I've this, built this great app. Please do not download it. <laughs> it's only for health workers. You're welcome to like the Facebook page. You're welcome to look at the videos, like the one from the BBC on our web page. But please do not try and register. It's going to really annoy us. Um, <laughs> so essentially, we started off with eye care, but very quickly, a lot of specialists wanted to join and it's now available in 15 specialties. Now, I'm going to scare you a little bit. I qualified from medical school with very little specialist training. We had a very good general upbringing, but I hadn't done neurosurgery. Uh, you might be thrilled to know that. Um, I didn't know much about ophthalmology. I didn't know much about dermatology. And I hadn't treated any patients with cancer. So although I was providing a general service, I couldn't really help patients who needed specialist attention. So the way the app works is the rural doctor or the rural nurse would click on the specialty that they need. 
Every specialty has a unique form, and this is where it's vital to have excellent design, and I'll show you how that happened later, so that the specialist receives exactly the right information they need to help the rural doctor make a decision or how to manage the patient. The other nice thing is we built chat into the system. It sounds so simple, but combining all these things has made a real difference. You can now send pictures, and the asynchronous nature of chat conversations means that the rural doctor can send the information and get on with her job, and the specialist can then reply between patients uh, when she's got uh, time, rather than being interrupted by the landline phone call. So our vision is for every health worker to have access to specialist advice. We would like specialist healthcare to be delivered at a primary level. To take you back for a bit of a history lesson, uh, this is me volunteering in Swaziland. It's the Vula Merchlo Eye Clinic, which means the Open Your Eyes Eye Clinic. It's the only eye clinic in the whole country. And Dr. Jonathan Pons invited me there, and he said, well, it should take you about three months to train you in basic eye care and how to do a type of surgery called cataract surgery. I have to admit, I was a bit of a slow learner. Um, it took me 10 months. Um, volunteering without a salary essentially meant that I lived on pilchards and vegetables that we picked from the garden. Um, but in a way, it was lucky that actually I spent more time there because we ended up doing outreach to all the rural clinics, often four hours drive there and back. And the rural health workers actually had really good mobile phones. So then I thought, well, why don't we create an app? Everyone else is making apps, why don't we, kind of thing. And said, well, if we connect the rural health workers with the specialists in the eye clinic, maybe we can stop doing all this driving. So obviously, I'd read a bit about design. I practiced for a while. I really made a big effort to learn how to design properly. And I thought, sure, I've combined my medical knowledge with all my design knowledge, and I managed to make the first version of Vula. <laughs> Perhaps some of you could have done a lot better. <laughs> You'll see it's very, very specific for eye care. It suited my needs. Uh, it had very, even very specific buttons for specific eye conditions. A cataract is basically when the lens of the eye goes white, the patient then goes blind. Then I hit gold because I got a small bit of money from the Shuttleworth Foundation. They gave me 50,000 rand, and I thought, wow, now I can make the app into a real thing. So 50,000 rand, I think it's about, it was about $4,000 at the time. So I phoned all these developers, and I was so excited. I said, I'd like an Android app, an Apple app, and a server in the background. And they said, what, 50,000 rand? <laughs> and they just laughed. And they said like, things like, um, tell you what, I'll build you a button. Would you like red or blue? <laughs> so I was a bit stuck. And then I managed to get hold of Debre Barrett. Debre Barrett is one of South Africa's top user experience designers. And she happened to be on holiday at the time at a place called Agullis, which you can see behind me. You may not know, but Agullis is actually the southernmost tip of Africa. It's where the Indian Ocean meets the Atlantic Ocean. And in a way, it symbolized the meeting of design and medicine. And she proved instrumental, and still actually works with us, to make sure Vula's a success. What, one of the first things she did was said, look, you, you're thinking of this only as an eye doctor. You need to think outside that little box. Think of yourself as a community health worker. She called these personas. Think of yourself as a nurse. Think of yourself as a specialist. And it's very appropriate that I'm here on kind of a theatrical stage because I really had to kind of step out of my shoes into other people's shoes and work out how they would use the app. What, what would they be looking for and what would they actually hope to achieve? We then got even luckier because her company donated 200,000 rands worth of design time. Uh, one of her other designers spotted a competition. It's nice to see that Leroy also enters competitions. And we won. We won a million rand. And then we could build more than a button. <laughs> so I also had to learn more about design, and Debray kind of schooled me as we went. You'll see the logo, the yellow one, for the first version of Vula, 
uh, you know, version one, you'll see it's still only focused on eye care, the little eye thing in the middle of a chat bubble. Uh, we're very lucky to get uh, the logo all designed for us. Uh, but then more and more specialties started coming to us, and we realized we only really had a skateboard. What if we had something better? And then one of the designers said, what you've got is one specialty. And it's almost like one bead in a necklace. And if you join up a whole other bunch of beads, like different specialties, suddenly you've got a very elegant network. And that proved great, because suddenly we went from ophthalmology to 15 specialties. We've now got a push scooter. We're looking forward to building the bicycle, the motorbike, and perhaps one day a Mercedes. Vula is used all over South Africa now. Every color is a different type of health worker. So you can see how instrumental the different personas actually uh, helped us actually make the system. The response time, you might say, well, why would a specialist respond? But we publish their response times to each other. Uh, doctors get competitive. <laughs> and the average response time is less than 15 minutes. So as a rural doctor, while I'm with the patient, I'm getting the help that I need. And what's interesting is it's always the least tech literate person that ends up as the fastest, because they're paranoid about being seen as the, the slowest. <laughs> and what's even better is that one in three patients are now managed in the rural areas without having to travel, and they, the, the junior doctor then learns case by case. And that's remarkable, that other two out of three tend to get appointments or referred for urgent conditions. If you compare what I had in 2004 with Sister Elise Mantuanison, who's in Friedendahl, uh, you probably don't know Friedendahl, it's four hours up the west coast of South Africa, but it's got a global record. It recorded the highest temperature ever on planet Earth, 48.4 degrees Celsius. In closer Hot is le chou chou. And if it's very, very hot, uh, it's le coupe en cleansia, manzini. Which means that it's so hot, the fish are coming out of the water. <laughs> Elisma then learnt case by case over two years. But then she stopped referring. And I thought, oh, maybe she's moved on. Uh, but I'd like to give her a phone call to see how things are going. So I gave her a call and I said, Elisma, it's been wonderful working with you and teaching you remotely, I hadn't actually met her at that stage, and she said, oh no, I haven't moved on, I know what to do now. And essentially she had been kept trained case by case remotely. She then raised money from Japan, and a Japanese diplomat came out to open her eye clinic. That's the difference that Vula's made from where I was in 2004 to where Lisma is now. Uh, she's the real star, she should really be here. So it's, my job really is to do social good. My job is to make sure that the medical side works, the medical side is accurate, more specialists come on board. I'm not very good at design, obviously, and I'm also not very good at monetization. So we brought in another colleague, Will Green, who actually focuses on building partnerships between Vula and companies that want to access our network of almost 4,000 doctors now. And we've also realized that actually Vula is seeing 3,000 patients a month. It's about one every eight minutes. So while we speak, patients are being seen and helped. And Google yesterday released a statement saying that they can diagnose medical conditions from 1,200 pictures. We've got over 80,000. Imagine if we built tools that can help our rural health workers even better. One of the buzzwords at the moment is disruption. However, I prefer St. Francis's quote, where if you find a difficult problem, don't try and break it, just bend it with gentleness and time. I think it's exceptionally dangerous to just disrupt healthcare. If you're in an ICU, you do not want to be disrupted. In fact, going viral is not such a good thing in medicine either. <laughs> So essentially, we really need to be careful with the way we do things. And I was really inspired by the architect of the art gallery, where he said they took the grain silos, and they didn't construct anything, they deconstructed. They took things away, 
I made it into a beautiful functional space that it is today. And it made me realize that perhaps that's what we've done with Vula. We've taken away the fax machine. We've taken away the telephone landline. We've taken away the frustration. And we've reduced the time it takes to access a specialist. So it's nice to hear the other speakers and to reflect on the different ideas that come up. In terms of the bigger picture, uh, Vula is growing very, very fast. 10% uh, of our users actually joined uh, since the beginning of this year. And this quarter, we're almost going to double uh, the figure of the last quarter from last year. So that's the bigger picture. You'll see that it only really started growing in about 2016. And that was because it was me on my own up until then. I, I guess in medical terms, you'd call it a flat line. Um, <laughs> but I was doing my best, as a bad designer would do. Then Debre sold her company to Deloitte Digital and came on board full-time with Vula. And that sudden growth, almost sort of exponential, is thanks to design. I think that I would love some of you to get inspired. Imagine if designers can do this across, across different healthcare systems. You are the ones that can help healthcare workers make a difference in their own world, but make the systems so much better. So let's take you back from the big picture down to one patient. If you threw a dart at a map of South Africa, you would hit the middle of the middle of nowhere, and there you would find a town called Da'ar. Now, Da'ar has got no specialists there, and a colleague of mine uh, volunteered to go there for a weekend to offer eye surgery to the patients. Uh, Willem Kerber is one of the top uh, surgeons now in Cape Town, and at the time we were living in Port Elizabeth, so it wasn't too far. I think it was about an eight-hour drive to, to get there. And so we set up camp, we had all the equipment we needed, uh, we operated on uh, 40 patients, and the surgery we were doing was called cataract surgery, which I mentioned earlier. It's where the lens of the eye is white, as you may remember, and if you remove it and put an artificial lens in, the patient should be able to see the next day. So unlike Simon, where blindness is permanent, there are some forms of blindness which are curable. What we didn't expect was on the Sunday, uh, Willem videoed the room of the patients because we had to prove to our wives that we'd actually been doing something useful. We hadn't just been on a, <laughs> on a road trip. <laughs> and um, by sheer fluke, we caught the reaction of one of the ladies. Can you see my tani? Okay, Mona. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. 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 Now, can you yourself lay me? No, leave me. Okay. Man, oh, man. <laughs>